Hey everyone, so just quickly, this video is a follow-up to my last video where I discussed why you ought to consider nihilism over existentialism. So if you missed that one, please click on the link above so you can watch that one first. Alright, so in this video I'll be discussing one of the paradoxes of nihilism. There are a few different paradoxes, but the one I'll be discussing is this. If life is meaningless, then how can you go on living? Wouldn't it be better just to die? Now I'm going to answer this with a nice quote from Thomas Ligotti's The Conspiracy Against the Human Race. If you're interested in reasons for why humans shouldn't exist, then I also recommend you checking out this other video I made, which details the thought of the pessimistic philosopher Peter Zapfer, and lists his methods that humans use to avoid existential suffering resulting from an overdeveloped consciousness. Okay, so back to Ligotti's quote. I'm just going to read quickly from the book here, just because the quote is rather long, so just bear with me for a moment. Simply because someone has reached the conclusion that the amount of suffering in this world is enough that anyone would be better off never having been born, does not mean by force of logic or sincerity he must kill himself. It only means he has concluded that the amount of suffering in this world is enough that anyone would be better off never having been born. Of course here Ligotti is talking about pessimists who believe that it would be better if humans weren't to exist. But the same logic can easily be applied to why nihilists aren't obliged to commit suicide. So just because someone is a nihilist doesn't mean that they should kill themselves. It just means that they've reached the conclusion that life is meaningless. We don't have any choice in our being born, though we do have some decision as to whether we want to continue living or whether we want to take our own life. The only thing with a nihilist though is that it doesn't matter if you live or die. So while you're under no obligation to end your life prematurely, it's just as pointless to go on living as it is to kill yourself. It makes no difference either way. Having said that though, there are some nihilists who have killed themselves in defense of their ideals. One example which Ligotti also mentions is that of the German philosopher Philip Mainlander. On the day that one of his pessimistic works was published, Mainlander killed himself. Now you may be wondering why any nihilist would wait for their work to be published, or to even write anything in the first place if they just want to die. Perhaps Mainlander wanted to set an example by killing himself first, and had hoped that the ideas in his book would influence others to recognize that humans shouldn't exist, and consequently commit suicide as well. But again, if life is meaningless, then why bother trying to create a work to leave behind in the first place? If you'd like to know the answer to that, then stay tuned for my next video where I'll be discussing the impossibility of nihilism. But just quickly to wrap up, no one chose to be born, and just because a nihilist is alive doesn't mean that they're under an obligation to commit suicide. Again, it doesn't matter what you do. Not to mention that it'd be pretty idiotic to call a nihilist a hypocrite if they didn't kill themselves, especially considering how most people that kill themselves are optimists who believe that life is good, but who just can't bear life suffering. Probably because they didn't realize nihilism's potentiality for liberating oneself from existential dread. But even if they did realize this, meaning may be so precious to them that they couldn't live without it. They'd suffer either way. Alright, that's it for me. Please like and subscribe if you like the content, and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, bye!